Hey everybody, Jerry Metrolake here, and today we're going to talk about the old trailer. give you guys an idea how I built this trailer if you look at the uh, the trailer frame itself it's some old galvanized pipe off of a chain link fence a friend of mine had some land in the yard and that axle assembly came off of an old boat trailer probably back probably in the 60s uh, the rest of the trailer had rotted down the axle was still fit for service it's a four lug axle so we built the trailer part uh, with the uh, galvanized pipe and you can still see the galvanized holding up and you look at, at this at one time it was a boat trailer Kind of give you an idea as things progressed. I had a 12-foot motorized P-Rog. Uh, we call them mud boats back home. It was a little inboard with a 12-horsepower Briggs and Stratton. It was 12-foot, and that's where the trailer was. And then I built a 14-foot, so we did this add-on piece here. It's 14-foot. So then after that, <laughs> all kind of came and went. Uh, we had air boats, so we didn't need the mud boats anymore. I converted it into a target trailer. So what you see here on the galvanized angle line, this is some old scrap that came off of a bleacher from a... Uh, a set of bleachers from a city park that they threw in a local dump. So I scrapped the uh, angle line off of that, made the cage for the, uh, for the trailer. This galvanized fenders was actually a piece of an old ice maker I found somewhere or the other. So I salvaged this out and bent it into some trailer fenders and welded it together. And you notice that the tires here, uh, this original trailer axle was made for 12 inch tires, a four lug, but a lot of the boat uh, landings that we went with tried to get our mud boats to, it was extremely muddy and deep ruts, so I had to lift the trailer. So what I did, I took a set of 15 inch car rims, and if you look, to, if you look at the rims themselves, you see they are flat faced. So what I did, I took a piece of 3 8 flat iron, cut the rim face off, it was a five lug Ford, cut the lugs off of it, the face, made that flat plate with the right lug pattern in the hole for the uh, spindle, welded it on there, so I got 15 inch tires, I can go anywhere and do it, what I want with it, a little bit higher. So it kind of evolved out of need. I've uh, changed the plywood a few times. But the central feature of this trail, I've got all my rifle rated steel in it. So when I go into rifle range, I can make up stages and do what I want. But the big thing, guys, the big thing is the fan. I can't talk enough about a fan in Louisiana. It does two things. Like in the summertime right now, I'm hiding in the shade. And it's like uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. It's about 95% humidity and it's about 85 degrees already. It's gonna get up to about 95 today. And without a fan like this, I just cannot come out on the range and practice. So it keeps me cool, but it does another function. It helps with the lead mitigation here when I shoot. What I try to do is have this fan out with me so I can have it blowing cross whatever I'm shooting. If I'm shooting a rifle, shotgun, handgun, I want cross circulation in front of me so I get a positive clean airflow. Uh, the, another thing you might notice, uh, this thing was actually designed for a muffler up on top. And what happened with that design was, of course, when it's running, uh, the prop picked the exhaust right here and it went right into your face. So I lowered the exhaust down to the bottom and it keeps the, uh, the exhaust fumes underneath the level that I exist in. So it works pretty good that way. But the big thing for me it's just the, the air quality and, and the temperature control. I use this thing every day. It's, hooked to, it, it's just what I am right now. A good friend of mine, Mr. Elliot Isaac, I used to have a real primitive one like this that was just affixed, but he came along and made this real, real fancy cage for me with a pivot stand, and uh, it's, just, it's just good, guys. I'll give you an idea of what I'm trying to do with this fan. I got a piece of ribbon. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it, the motor I bought was... California rated and that means it won't go on a low idle so it idles at about a thousand or eleven hundred rpm I would have preferred a 500 but uh, you get what you get for a hundred bucks you know Harbor Freight but anyway <laughs> anyway but one thing I do have to say it is a one pull wonder I, I've had this thing for I don't know how many 10 12 years changed the spark plug one time and these propellers by the way you can buy these propellers for just about any horsepower rating or you can buy a uh, hot air inflator hot air balloon inflator those cost like 2500 bucks you can build this for a couple two or three hundred dollars at the most and give you an idea look at that brother so that's on idle 
I'm gonna walk it out a little bit for you. Now that feels good right now. I'm ready to shoot. Over there I wasn't, I'm ready to shoot here. To give an idea of the airflow, I'm a good uh, six, eight yards from it now. Still a lot of air right here. The other thing I like about it, <clears throat> so even at this distance, you got a good, you got a good bit of airflow. But if you really want to control the whole shooting environment here, and what you notice about most of the <clears throat> berms in Louisiana, they're kind of secluded and you have trees around them. And when it, when it gets really stagnant, the air won't move at all. So if you want to take this fan and then rev it up a little bit, You can see. I know what you're thinking. It sounds like a Cessna crashing in your backyard. But I was 40, 35, 40 yards away and it was still blowing the ribbon really good. That's the kind of air quality you can get at a distance if you want to put it up to that RPM. But to me, it's just, uh, it's just an environmental thing. It's a survival in the heat. And I can go out and practice in the middle of the daytime. So there you have it, guys. Kind of walk around on my trailer. I think I got a few bucks invested in the whole rig. Of course, there are, this is about $200 worth of stuff right here. You're looking at 250 bucks. And the rest of this is just scrap all put together. So, so there you have it, guys. One trail. I've been around since 1974, 75. So it's been around. Makes me feel old. It's 